Hello and welcome to Shiny Crochet. Today we are making bows, a perfect beginner project. I will be covering two versions. They use the same techniques but will have the rows either vertical or horizontal on the final bow. You can start with foundation single crochet or with a chain. This is a great opportunity to try something new if you're not comfortable with foundation single crochet. The starting row is hidden at the back of the bow so any mistakes will be hidden. Version 1 has horizontal rows with the opening of the bows on the ends. The foundation row sets the width of the bow, then repeating rows of the same stitch count until twice the bow height. This means the deconstructed bow is almost a square. For this bow, I used a thin 8-ply cotton yarn with 4.5mm hook. I start with a chain of 15. Be sure to keep a longer starting tail. One, two, three, fourteen, fifteen. Then complete fourteen single crochet back along the chain. One. Two, Fourteen, fifteen. Chain one and turn. Complete fourteen single crochet back along this row. One. Two. Three. Thirteen, fourteen. Chain one and turn. That's the end of row two. Repeat this until seventeen rows in total. Once you have 17 rows, or it is twice the final height of the bow, tie off, but don't cut the tail yet. Use the starting tail to sew the first and last rows together.
Now we'll use the long tail to bind the middle. Pinch the center and wrap the tail around. Be careful not to pull it too tightly as that will make the bow fold in on itself. If this is too difficult, you can cut the tail and join a new one, but that will add two tails to sew in. Be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop for future patterns and tutorials. Once the middle is bound, cut a long tail. Use that to set the back of the bow, sending the needle back and forth over the back side. Then sew in any remaining tails. I will now start version 2. At the end, I will show how I join the bows to the hair comb. You can use the chapter function to skip ahead. Version 2 has vertical rows, with the bow loops along the top and bottom. The starting row sets the bow height, then repeating rows of the same stitch count until twice the bow width. This means the deconstructed bow is a narrow rectangle with short rows. This means the deconstructed bow is a narrow rectangle with short rows. To make this bow, I use a fluffy 8-ply glitter yarn with a 5.5mm hook. As before, you can use whatever you have available. I use foundation single crochet to start this time. You can give it a try or use the chain method of version 1. I start with 8 foundation single crochet. You could chain 9 and do 8 single crochet along instead. Keep a longer starting tail, it will be used later. To start the foundation single crochet row, complete a chain of 2. 1 2 Then insert your hook in the first loop. If you find this tricky, Try a chain of three instead of two. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through again. That is the foundation. Now we'll yarn over and pull through two loops to create the single crochet. That is stitch one. Repeat this process another seven times to create eight foundation single crochet. Hook through the base, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two. That's two stitches. Hook through the base. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. That's three. Eight. You can check how many stitches you've completed by turning to look along the top of the row. Each V shape is one stitch. Count them to confirm there are eight. Add or remove stitches as needed. Chain one and turn. Complete eight single crochet back along. 
one, two, three, eight. Chain one and turn. That's the end of row two. Repeat the last row until you have 40 rows. I use a stitch marker every 10 rows to help keep count. You don't need to be precise, however if you're making matching bows it is helpful. When working with single crochet in rows, you can check how many rows you have by counting the holes. Now we have 40 rows, tie off, don't cut the tail. Use the starting tail to sew the first and last rows together. Make sure there's no twist. Next, we will be converting this ring into a bow. This is the same process as before. Pinch the center and then wrap the yarn around the middle. Continue wrapping, moving outwards to keep it even, up to two centimeters roughly in width. Keep checking it is centered. You can twist the sides if it's looking a little crooked. If it is looking off or you're not too sure, you can always undo and try again. Once you're happy, cut a tail and use that to secure the back of the binding. You don't need to be particularly tidy as it will be on the back of the bow. If your bow will be used in a way that both sides will be shown, then maybe try a decorative design. Once it's set, sew in any remaining tails. I use a separate strand for attaching the bow onto things, making it easier to remove. For the most part, I make these bows for hair combs, which can break or disintegrate. Being able to detach the bow and add a comb is really useful. 
I start by wrapping the tail of yarn around the comb bridge across the center prong. I cross it back over a couple of times, keeping a few inches free to be sewn in it at the end. Then I hold the bow in place, making sure to keep the back or messy side against the bridge, and continue wrapping the yarn around both the bridge and bow on the center prong. Then work outwards by one prong on either side until it's fairly secure. Cut a long tail. This will be used to sew the back of the bow onto the rest of the bridge. It will help stop the bow twisting as much when it is set in the hair. Wrap the yarn around the outside to help set the bands. Use a sewing needle to finish off this middle section. Start working along the bridge, picking up the back of the bow and go along to the end. I only pick up the back loop of the bow so the front sits up nicer. It can show signs of puckering if pinned to the bridge, especially once under tension in hair. Once you reach the end, work back along to the center. Send the needle through the middle and repeat on the other side. Test it out and sew in the end. <coughs> Test it out and sew in the tails. If you find it's crooked, you can undo and try again. Once it's set, sew in any remaining tails. And you're all done, ready to start styling. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Drop a comment below on what color you're making your bows. You can use these same templates with different stitches and yarn for practice. Also, if you want to check out a PDF of this pattern, check the link below for a free PDF on Ravelry. Here's some ramblings of yours truly, sharing how I use the combs with my hair. All right, so welcome to my space. It looks a little bit strange and it's gonna be a bit echoey, but we're gonna do what we can do. Let's have a play with some combs. So just using one of the basic combs, 
What I'm doing is just picking up using the corner of the comb, that bit around the ear, just to keep it nice and tidy. And then I fold the top down that little bit. And then in it goes. I'm done. So sometimes it'll spring out and do some funny things. But yeah, this is how the comb actually works by itself. And then all that we're doing is adding a pretty bow that's going to be sitting on there. So some of the hairs through here are a little bit short and they're only just getting to the front of the bow so I do need to be a little bit careful. If I want to be a little bit extra or my hair is just in my face too much so you can see how this part just is falling forward. But all that I do for this other side is grabbing this top section and again getting some of those under hairs over the top and that'll help hold the others in place without creating too much bulk. My hair is currently at a weird in-between stage where it's growing out from being shaved um, and it was styled a couple of months ago. So it's been long enough now that the sides are almost grown out to match the length on the top. The back was growing out, but I have been trimming it. So if it's a bit crooked in the back, that's just me hacking at it with scissors. This is essentially all that I do. If it is being too chaotic, I'll dampen the hair and then put the combs in and that's usually enough for it to stay in place. Maybe a little bit of hairspray if you're trying to be fancy. So another style that I can usually get away with if my hair is wet This is my, I'm running around at home and just need my hair off my face and to be out of my way and to stop getting in my face. And so it's the single comb, brushing that centerpiece back and then letting the rest of it sit down. But have a play with it, see what works for your hair. Each person's hair is different. Uh, the way that you like to frame your face will also change things. But this is essentially what I do. <laughs> have a lovely day. If you're worried about the bow being too dramatic and too strange and people are going to comment on it, make things or get things that are outside of your comfort zone if that's what you want. If you're looking at these things and going, oh, I couldn't possibly wear that, but I want to wear that, find a way to become comfortable with it. Wear it when you're alone. Take some fun selfies. Take photos where you're looking excited, where you're enjoying looking like that. Get comfortable with it in that way. You don't need to come out with a blast. You don't need to have an entire wardrobe of this all new style. Just get an item here or there, start curating specifically what you want and what you want to try out and then take some selfies of yourself looking badass. Don't take your selfies when you're sitting there being critical of yourself. Don't look at yourself in the mirror where you're going, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna hate it. Do you like the look of someone doing that in something that you love? Nah. We like someone who is looking confident, who is looking at peace in the, who is looking at peace with themselves in those clothes. That's those photos that you need to be taking. That's the poses that you need to be striking and ignore the part of your brain that's like, mm, someone's gonna say, that. no, they're not. And if they are, that's on them. And if you try it and you're like, actually, that's not me, that's fine. Try tweaking it to something else. You can then spend the time to figure out what is it about that thing that I like and what is it that I don't like? And then how do I break down from there to find my final style? And you don't need one style. I dress completely differently depending on the scenario. There are days where I look like a three-year-old and then there are days where I don't. And it's up to you what you want to do and how often you want to change it up. So, okay, enough rambling. Let's get making. Bye.